<gasps> that's that's. Oh, oh, no, no. Hang on, hang on. We'll move this around. Andre, short, tubby one, me long and slender. <laughs> I'm not sure I like this bit, <laughs> but we'll keep it in anyway. Hi everybody, well here we are at our third podcast, I think, the Old Fire Talk. Uh, we've been joined by a couple of friends here. Um, I'm not sure there's any reference between the way these have been placed. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> and me. I think I've been done on that one. So we've actually joined us on our last working day of the year. Woo-hoo. So it's nearly Christmas, so um, I might get into the Christmas spirit. <sighs> Do you know what? I wondered why that hat was there. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not going to work, is it? No. There we go, right. So might anyway. Keep your head warm. Well, that's true. <laughs> so anyway. Well, we've had a bit of a busy time again, haven't we? Oh, yes. Yes. It's been a good year. Yeah. And uh, the last bit of packing has just gone out. Thank God. Yeah. Um, guess who was doing the packing? Me. He knows his place. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so actually, also, since last time, we've been doing a few demos for some uh, clients or potential clients. Mm. I think one in particular uh, is going to be quite an exciting one because it's a bit of a household name. Or it could lead to many household oh, okay. names, at least. Trying to get Andrew's secret re- exactly. uh, Can't, again. references. I'm like thinking, which one is he talking about? Yeah, okay. There's, 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 there's been a few more happening, mm. which again, unfortunately, we can't talk about too much yet. No. But one that we can talk about is the uh, a- airline test. Oh, yes. We got a bit of. Um, so, this is the one that went on social media, and people going, oh, why would you, uh, why would you set a light to a chair? Exactly. Well, like, let, let, let me. Not do, our test, it's the airline test. Let's do a bit of background on this one. So, uh, we were approached by a chap by the name of Max who's at the uh, Aviation Academy up in Newcastle, and he's doing his dissertation about fire safety on uh, planes. Um, and he said, can you test that? He's seen the fire safety, he's seen it compared to other extinguishers might be, and he's really, was really excited about it. So he said, can we do a test based on the standard commercial airline tests for um, fire extinguishers with it? So we were thinking, mm, maybe. Not quite sure what we were letting ourselves in for, but actually, what happened? put the fire out that's what happened <laughs> no the only reason we were nervous well I was nervous was obviously there's lots of unknowns there didn't know the size of seat that they were coming um obviously we've got to do the fires in the trailer so if yep. it's a big seat then the flames are going to be licking up into the roof and yep. I didn't want it that it took me a long time to build that thing um so as it come as it comes it's uh, it was uh, it was okay we um they weren't too big uh, the backs of them weren't too big, and uh, we followed their instructions. Uh, with, which was uh, 0.9 litres of petrol. Yeah. And it had to, that it had to burn for 30 seconds, yeah. and then we could attempt to extinguish yeah. it. And again, a lot of people going, oh, yeah, but that's just the accelerant. Why would you do it on an airline seat that's you know, flame retardant? It's not our test. Um, again, it's, it's just they wanted to um, mm. see if the product would do it. They did it. Really I was, quickly. I was a bit too cocky because I went, do you know what, that was too quick. I relit the fire um, and put it out again with the same stick, um, which was good. Yeah. Uh, he was quite happy with that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, what we'll do is, we'll, for those that are watching this podcast on YouTube, we'll insert a bit of a clip of the actual test itself so people can see it from there as well anyway. Hopefully you're not going to insert the audio of me going, woohoo. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit excited. <laughs> Um, but actually, that I had a great conversation with Max about the situation with fire extinguishers on airlines and what have you, which obviously we'll go to another time maybe. But um, I think what was really quite interesting, he was also telling us about another test that they have to do and a rig that's done. Yeah, it's give, just given me extra work to do now because I thought, oh, that's a great test. Mm. Uh, so we're going to get it manufactured. Um, well, manufactured? No, we're going to get it made um, as per the specifications yep. for the airline yeah um and it's called the hidden fire test mm. so watch this space that's going to be a really interesting one and that will i think once we actually do that and demonstrate it that will really give an eye uh, uh, the, the public the idea of how the fire stick works over traditional extinguishers and again we're not got to remember and i get a lot of stick this mm. for this we're not replacing traditional extinguishers it just works different you know yeah. this is a it's there to tackle fires before they get out of control mm. um you know in line with the uh, fire brigade's um, advice no bigger than a waste paper bin it's just because it's easier yeah. to use it's it's um 
it's going to be close at hand as well. So it's a lot exactly. more compact. I think also it will, it will demonstrate the fact they say literally that the, the fire safety can get into parts where other extinguishers can't uh, get to is my joke is it, it's the Heineken of extinguishers. Yeah. But we yeah, actually wrote this down. Exactly. Thank should, you. Should I do it? And I was like, I don't know if anyone, is that, that's a really old, uh, it's a bit of an old still, reference, isn't yeah, it? Is it still around? Uh, uh, well, the, the drink is, but I'm not sure the reference is anymore. But anyway, that's not important right now. What is important <laughs> is it will actually demonstrate, is a prime example of when we had that caravan fire early in the summer, mm. where again they were trying to get, in that case it was a foam extinguisher, through a vent, which obviously just not the way to do it. And this is the same principle that will happen with the... Uh, well, they weren't just station. chucking foam at it, it was buckets of water they were throwing it at yeah. everything but the thing is these are it was through the grill that yeah. was there to deflect the water you know yeah. um and of course that's why they couldn't get the the fire out that's why the fire stick could work because it just literally went through the grill yeah exactly um, exactly yeah that's good so what i wanted to touch on as well is um obviously we welcome anybody who's got any questions about general fire safety not just about the fire safety stick there's a few questions that have come through or are often asked um to us about it and we want to touch on, so one, people are asking about fire ratings. Yes. What's your thoughts on the fire ratings? Is this the long version or the short version? I'm going to go get a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, you've got to remember, and we, um, we have to, we're going to have to do a whole piece on this. Yes. Um, what, what's the fire rating and why is it there for? Fire rating's there for a risk assessor or someone who's assessing a commercial building to see, right, for the space that's in and the risk that they have so yeah. if it's electrical or, you know fuel whatever it is is to work out what size fire you can put out with that extinguisher now i don't know where we've all become firemen and why do we need to know what size fire i'm not a fireman you're not a fireman we're not supposed to be going out and putting fires out um so it's it's what it's in a com it's really in commercial, mm. you know. So, our way of looking at it is you shouldn't be tackling a fire that's out already out of control. It's stopping a fire from getting out of control. So it's small fires, uh, in line with what the fire brigade say, Correct. no bigger than the waste paper bin if you're safe to do so. And then there's loads of other safety advice like you know make sure your your back is to the escape so you can get out in case it gets out, out of control. Um, but we're not. We're not, we don't want to be going around saying, well, this is a fire rating. This is the size of fire you can put out with this one. And this is, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be just looking at it as, it's an aid to escape. Okay, so it doesn't matter what size fire it is. You're aiding the escape mm. of, of that building, not they're trying to put the fire out. And the fire, you shouldn't be tackling big fires. Exactly. So what's the point? Uh, if we were going after that market and, you know, um, you know, looking at putting out big car, you know, big car fires or this. No, that's not that's not what the product's there for. To stop it from getting out of control. If you catch it early enough, that's what it's there for. I think it's also it's, it, 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 obviously it's, the rating is based around the size of the fires, but it's also the situations that people d don't really appreciate, and that's why there's been so many times when you know it's been you know a smallish fire, but the situation of that fire meant that a traditional extinguisher has struggled in that particular place, whereas that's helped. And I think therefore it's, it's probably an unfair measurement because. Otherwise, you're going to have people, oh, I'm being facetious here, but it's almost people are going to kind of measure the size of the fire, and only that is if it's in a perfect situation, in a controlled situation. Yep. Well, in real life, it won't be like that. No. There'll be lots of the factors there. And, and, of course, unless you're a trained fireman with the techniques, and, but that's, that's what the professionals are there for. Correct. This, Correct. Isn't, this isn't you know, for you to go and tackle fires that are out of control. Mm. This is an aid your escape or tackle fires that are so yeah, you know, exactly. small that you're putting it out straight away. So mm. um, again, and this is why we have, it's having such great success mm. with, um, uh, hopefully our message is coming through uh, loud and clear with that one. We're trying to, we're trying to make that a lot, a lot clearer, my view. I suppose one of the other um, questions that people ask is, well, why is it so expensive? You know, when you compare to, you could probably pick up something like a, a one kg uh, dry powder of one for 20 quid, you know, and yet the, you know, the fire safety stick, you know, it's, the retail starts at 74.50. I know there's, there's sometimes you've got deals on multiple packs and things like that. But you're know, thinking, well, why is that so much more expensive compared to traditional extinguishers? Unfortunately, this is the manufacturing of that special resin. You know, the reason it can last 50 seconds or 100 seconds, there is, there is uh, the manufacturing side of it. Um, the thing that annoys me is when people go, oh, you're cashing in. It's like, 
if we were cashing in, surely we'd give it a five-year shelf life and then have that reorder. Mm. In actual fact, there's 15 years minimum mm. and probably will last for longer. Mm. Um, it's kind of almost, I don't know, to us, it's for our side, we're not doing it for the money. We're doing it no. you know, to get the product out there. Otherwise, if we were doing it for the money, we would be looking at resale, resale, you know, five yeah. years, you have to rechange it, even there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. Um, but again, we just, we've just got to keep that message, keep plugging away and making uh, sure people understand, look, yeah. yes, it is more expensive um, than the traditional one, but, you know, there is, there is positives around this product that outweigh that 40, 50 pound difference. And the fact of, you know, 15 years, that 40, 50 pound is going to be nothing. And I'll tell you what, it's not... Not not expensive if you use it and it puts the fire out. Oh, well, exactly, and that's cheap. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, and I think that's the, the frustrating thing is that actually, yes, you're right. You know, on the shelf that costs more than, than your traditional extinguisher. But actually, fact, when you factor in the fact that you only need the one type of extinguisher, fire safety stick, the fact that it lasts for 15 years plus compared to five years typically. So in which case you'll be buying three of those for one of these. It actually works out. That works out much much better. Don't value. forget. Don't forget. All compressed cylinder extinguishers need servicing. Mm. You know, it, it, I know people are saying, oh, you don't need to service it. Uh, like that guy who had his 15 years, never serviced it, it's never let me down. You never had to use it, mate. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> how's it not let you down? Um, again, it's we're, it's not for everybody, but you know, as long as we're getting that message out there. Yeah. Um, and that's the, that's the main thing. It's giving the people the tools. Uh, yeah, exactly, it. exactly. I think Andrew's, I Andrew's checking his little spreadsheet over there, going, "Have we covered everything?" You know what? He's Fortunately getting... for those that are on the podcast <laughs> and listen to it, won't know this next bit. He's getting his glasses on. I've got my glasses on. Everybody <laughs> can't see this. So, what were the other next questions we got? Was we about that? I think really that's uh, they were they were the main bits we want to draw things. But I think really it's just a quick summary of where we got to this year, really, isn't it? Um, busy year, very mm. busy. Uh, so this year we were launched into agriculture and commercial vehicles. Yeah. Uh, so from the agriculture point of view, that covered the question track, you know, all all, all the farming. Uh, yes. Which is doing really well. It's got some really good distributors on board. Mm. They're now pushing the message and putting the retail packs into um, into the. I don't know what they what were they called. What was the farming one? Well, uh, the agri pack basically. Agri pack, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, but into the shops, the farming shops. I actually don't know the terminologies. It's like it's, chandleries. It's, it's not chandleries. Yeah, yeah. Tack, chandleries shops, no. tack shops. Do you know what? I think it's just agricultural supplies. No, oh, okay. You know what? Well, if we've got that wrong, write in correctors yeah. on that one. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, but um, so commercial vehicles yeah. um, have been huge, absolutely huge mm. this year, um, and where it's set to go is just huge as well. Just imagine, just on the weight, a saving of the weight from a traditional extinguisher to that. Yeah. You know, there is, it's more of a company policy. Should they have extinguishers rather than unless it's unless you're carrying dangerous goods where you have to have certain extinguishers, but we're not touching that market. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's just a no-brainer. Mm. It really is, and and the uptake on it has just been huge. Some big names, big big names that are actually now starting to roll this out into their fleet um and of course now they've got they've got control of the maintenance yes okay not servicing maintenance is it there is it still fit for purpose because there's no docking? because there's no servicing required there's remember? no servicing but maintenance is good practice to make sure that you know it's still there no one's used it but mm. it back on there so and that you can it's a visual check but it's recorded mm. um and that's really really popular i mean that's going to go that's going to go huge. Exactly. And I think also what's important is the fact that some of these companies are approaching us. We've not even approached them. We've not even tried to do a sales pitch to them. No. They've actually found us. They've heard about the product and they've been contacting us saying, yeah. we want to know more about this. You know, we've got 100 plus vehicles. I mean, yes, there was another prime example, particularly, you know, industrial sector, which we've not even thought about before. Mm. And that is going to be great potential. Yeah. Uh, do you know who's actually, who's, who, who have we got in sales? We haven't got anyone. Well, uh, technically, <laughs> technically, you know, we're the salespeople. And yeah. I, anyone who knows me, I'm not good at sales. Um, we, at the end of the day, it is just talking about the product. So yeah. all the leads that are coming in are coming to us. Yeah. We do the shows, obviously. We, yeah. you know, we're, we've only got two shows for next year. I want to say that um, I think this year it's been a tough one is because we did so many shows, shows ourselves. Yeah. And I think, we've, we, I said, we're just doing the two shows. Well, currently, as things stand at the moment, two we're just doing the two shows next year. But I've got a busy year. You have indeed. I've got a really busy year. I've got, um, so we're, 
opening an office in Ireland. Um, we've got the potential growth into three other countries, mm -hmm. which I can't speak about yet. Um, so I'm going to be... Can, can I just check? Are they going to be warmer and sunnier than this country? <laughs> They are. So just to clarify, it's going to be that I'm going to be the one, sorry about this, I'm going to be the one that's probably going over to Ireland more and he's going to go to sunnier climes. I don't like this setup. No, I'm going to Ireland. I love oh, yeah. Ireland. Um, but I was going to say, so next year's going to be really busy. Mm. So we are, um, we are on the hunt for a recruit, you know, we are recruiting. Yeah. If, uh, you know, we are looking for people that can... Um, well, like a proper salesperson, maybe. Do you know, I don't like sales. I don't, I don't believe in sales because um, technically all we're doing is educating people on the product. It's the selling product itself. It sells itself. We don't, we don't, you know, the opportunities, it's, may, it's mainly making sure that our distributors are out there, have got all the support. Yeah. Uh, and we're really going to be pushing this next year because mm. we've kind of, we were going a, a million miles an hour and, and we've got distributors, we've got all the, they've all got their support. But I, I want to do more. Yeah, I want and to I put think... a team together to do more next year for our distributors to support yeah. them with marketing uh, and push and, and get their knowledge. Um, I know I'm not going to be around as much. Um, so I said, well, cause that, I think that's the thing, because we were doing so many shows last year, yeah. there was a lot of time when we were out of the office. Mm. And I think that's where we think, actually, you know, we need to be concentrating. We need to be supporting yeah. the people that are out there already for us. And actually, the new opportunities that are coming through, and I think that's where we well, change. How many distributors have we got now? Over 140. Oh, at least, at least. Yeah. So um, it's it's now go back um, and and make sure that everyone's supported. Yeah. Um, so what else we got to do? Um, we're having some building work downstairs at the moment to uh, to the warehouse. Yeah, so actually, we, we've been pretty well. I was going to warn people about the noise happening yeah, on that one, but I think we've actually got away with it noise. so far. I did actually go downstairs and oh. warn them to say, look, right, fine. If you you know if you do come upstairs, yeah. Don't go to the right, go to the yes. left, because <laughs> we're recording on to the right. So, um, it's like when you get onto the plane, that's what you do on the, get on the plane, isn't it? You turn to the left, not to the right. <laughs> don't listen to him. I don't think I've ever been going to the left. I always go... I've already gone to the plane, full stop, really. I always but... sit at the back, right by the toilets, because my little girl, just wherever she goes, she has to go to the toilet. It's like one of them... Um, I'm, I'm sure all kids do it, but yeah, mm. she's, uh, she's always... Near, I need the toilet. Right. Really. Um, so yeah, okay, I hope so, we've got some big names coming on board as well. So next year, um, and we're going to look at we some new sectors as well, maybe. No, um, I think next year we are just going to concentrate on the ones that we've got. Yeah. Uh, see some natural. The yeah. year after that, I believe that we are then going to start hitting the trades. So, yes. So you know your plumbers, merchants, your electrical wholesalers, hot works guys, basically. Yeah. Um, your roofers and and so on, and hopefully mm. we'll start having start seeing the point of sale in a lot more places. Um, but mm. we're just, we're gonna get, get some more exposure out there yeah, first. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Good. Um, is it time? Is it's it time to break up for Christmas? Not you yet. Oh, never mind. Yes. Never mind. So, Andrew will be back on the 4th of January. Yes, and when will you be back? 9th of January. How does that work? Um, I'm actually going to take a holiday. Okay, you have a holiday. You deserve did I, it. Did I take a holiday last year? No. Yes. Uh, I, oh, I, um, I think, no, actually, I, I did half term in February. Yeah, that was this year, technically, but, but yes, this year. Depending on yeah. when you're watching it. So, yeah. Thank you. You have a holiday. You deserve it. You've worked so yeah. hard. I have not. <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so shall, we, uh, shall we wrap things up then? Yes. Thank you. Right, well. If I had actually known that we were doing a podcast day, I would have bought my Christmas jumper. Yes. I had my Christmas jumper yesterday because we had our Christmas due yesterday and I was the only one, can you believe this, right? I was the only one in a Christmas jumper and I don't even like Christmas jumpers. Could be worse. People are probably watching this in the middle of February now and thinking, why is he wearing a Christmas hat for? <laughs> anyway, so hopefully you're going to see this, we're going to get this out just before Christmas. Um, and so that's it really, I think, for us for this year and we'll see you all in... Uh, 2023. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Have a great yeah, Christmas, New bye. Year. Cheers, bye. Can we go now? Are we finished? Yeah, done. Okay. <clears throat>